Okay, and we are going live on YouTube as we speak. I want to welcome every single one to our Wednesday night training. It is absolutely a pleasure to have you here as it always is on a Wednesday night. Uh, we're going to continue our SMS series tonight. Been looking forward to this, excited about doing it. And uh, we're going to continue that and get that out of the way. Uh, probably we'll have just a little bit more next week, but also uh, some exciting news for those that uh, are part of the digital table tip program. We are working with uh, the D digital table tip manufacturer, the software developer. I had an opportunity to speak with him today and uh, we are going to work with him and uh, develop some training materials and, and, and bring some things on board to finally smooth out this process. Uh, he is absolutely phenomenal. I talked with him today. He's very responsive, uh, extremely responsible, and uh, it's going to be a great relationship uh, working with him to create uh, some of the tools that are needed to help you be successful with the digital table tent. So there'll be more on that next week. I'll be working with him and developing the training and putting all that together, and uh, we will ha have that as we continue forward. But uh, welcome, everybody, as we continue on with our uh, SMS training tonight. Uh, first and foremost, let's take care of the housekeeping real quick. If you've not joined our Facebook group, join us at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash AWS Mastermind. That's facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash AWS Mastermind. Uh, and if you have not joined our uh, App Wizard Studio YouTube channel, you will want to do that. Uh, we go live there. We're also looking at starting to go live on Facebook, uh, on our Facebook channel. So we want you to be a part of uh, our App Wizard Studio broadcast. And uh, we're trying to make it as accessible as possible as we go through these trainings. Uh, real quick disclaimer, App Wizard Studio nor I cannot guarantee just because you are watching training, you will make any sales, create any traffic or increase your income. Every person is different, has different work ethics and different desires. Tonight, we're going to talk about who is your client's target market. You know, I think the target market uh, is one of the most misunderstood uh, aspects of marketing with anything, really. Uh, knowing what the target market is, what it actually means, and, and how it works. Uh, a target audience or a target market is the focus and guided force that determines the market's message. Uh, it's not the same message for everyone. Specifically, if the person you wish to receive your message, the intended audience is more or less. By creating a target market, you're not keeping others from the marketing material. You're not keeping them from the products. Uh, hey, Duke Ritter, I was just saying, I just saw you check in. Let me just repeat what I said. Uh, working with a, a fellow with the uh, digital table tents. We're uh, getting ready to create a, a full training suite. We're getting ready to start bringing on some uh, more training for the digital table tents. This guy is phenomenal. He's extremely accessible. And uh, we're getting ready to clean up some things with that so you guys can get out and do that. But let's get back to target marketing. Uh, you know, a lot of people think if I target market, I'm leaving people out. You don't do that. That does not happen. You know, you have to understand your market. You have to understand who they are, but you also have to know what they want. It doesn't mean that if I say, okay, well, I'm going to put up some ads this week or I'm going to drive some SMS marketing for this particular product, uh, nobody else is going to come in and buy. Far from the truth. You're going to drive them in, okay, the target market. You want to sell a specific product and the other customers are still going to participate. But you want to drive a particular target so you can do what? Increase your footfall for that specific item and so that you can get rid of and sell that particular item because it needs to move. How do you use SMS to uh, pick up a target market? Who is your target market? What do you do? Uh, SMS is very, very, can be, okay, can be uh, complicated if you make it that way. Uh, you can use texting as a tool to reach virtually anybody okay uh really anybody i mean you can you can go out and you can put your sms your 27126 or or whatever the code is and your the short code or the long code with your keyword 
and you can target a very, very broad audience. Depending on what you're marketing to, uh, let's say that you're marketing kids' tennis shoes. You may not want to run that in a magazine that's strictly for adults, okay? You'll want to run it for the younger market, okay? You may not want to hit a, a 50, 60-year-old, 45 to 60-year-old market. If you're selling kids' tennis shoes, you're going to want to hit that, maybe that 20, you know, 18 to 25, 30 market because those are usually the ones who, who have the smaller children and, and are looking to, uh, to purchase those products. So be careful where you advertise and how you advertise and what you do and how you use that. You really have to employ the best SMS marketing you can. And your goal is to communicate directly with your target market. A lot of people think that SMS marketing is a broad blanket to increase footfall. It is used to increase footfall, but it's not a broad blanket. And that's why most businesses fail using SMS. The ones that are successful understand their market completely. Let me give you a prime example. There's a huge outlet mall over in my hometown. And when I go over there, I like to go over there and pick up some tennis shoes at the Nike store or, or some jeans at, at Old Navy or something like that. And, and But when I go over there, now they've got one blanket, okay, SMS campaign out on the sidewalk. What does it blanket? It blankets the entire mall, okay? So when I'm out there and I receive something from them, what they do is, is they target the entire mall. They send you out an app that's got every shop in it. It's got all the specials in it. It's got everything. But if I'm going to Old Navy, okay, if I'm going to Old Navy, and when I signed up for their SMS program, or if I'm going to the Nike outlet and I signed up for their SMS program, more than likely they're going to ask me a couple of questions and they're going to segment me. Okay. They're not going to sell Carrie Miller uh, children's tennis shoes. They're going to sell Carrie the latest men's whip. Okay. So they've segmented me and they put me in a piece of a market <coughs> so they can reach out to me particularly. All right. And that's the way you want to set up your niches. That's the way you want to set up your marketing campaign. And what do you mean by target marketing? You know, uh, you've got to really focus. You have to think about it. It's got to be that guiding force, like I was just talking about, that determines what your message is. You have to, you know, you've got 160 characters. And part of those 160 characters is going to be a link to direct them to a coupon or something like that. Uh, if, I'm a, if, if, if I'm a vegan, okay, a steakhouse, and I probably wouldn't go to a steakhouse if I was a vegan, but if I went with my friends and I signed up for their SMS campaign and they shot me a message for steak every week, guess what? I'm probably not going to do that. So you may want to segment that down just a little bit and, and, and set those kind of things up so you can uh, reach out to the target market that you actually want to reach out to. It's very, very, very important. A target audience, okay, a target audience or target market is the focus, the focus of your campaign. Remember that word. It's the focus of your campaign. You've got a specific product that's targeted to a specific audience, and that's the audience you want to reach out to. Prime example, when I got into SMS, when I actually got into uh, uh, App Wizard Studio, it was because of the mobile web app. I was looking for a product that I could use with SMS so that my sales reps could go out and target zip codes. So what we would do is we would set up specific zip codes, okay, and we would go out and we would segment those zip codes and put them in, they were in our database, and when we would inspect the roof, we would have the folks join our SMS list. Now, why would we do that? Because if a hailstorm hits in North Texas, it could, it could hit in three of 500 zip codes. Well, I don't want to blanket target 500 zip codes. Number one, it's a waste of money. It's a waste of time. And I don't want to waste my customer's time. But what I would do is, is I would watch the hail swaths as they would come across North Texas and come across our marketing area where we were, and the zip codes that actually got hit, if they got hit, the zip codes that would actually get hit, 
I could pinpoint those zip codes and mark it directly to the homes in those zip codes that had signed up on our list. Now, what did that specific target marketing do for us? Now, these are people who liked us. They trusted us. We had already inspected their roof. They knew who we were. I'm just simply wanting to send them a message out that says, hey, guys, we inspected your roof. We don't want you to forget us because a big hailstorm just hit and a bunch of people are going to come to you. So that's exactly what we would tell them. Hey, don't forget Amro Roofing Group. Okay. We were your roofing company. We inspected your roof. Click here to set an appointment. Our phones literally rang off the hook. We went from 100000 to $1.9 million in roofing sales because of the SMS campaign. Because of the SMS came campaign specifically. Okay. Now, why did that happen? because I didn't waste time and I didn't waste uh, uh, resources and I didn't waste salespeople going out. These people would call, okay? We would look up their name. We already knew what salesperson had gone out there and inspected the roof and voila, the salespeople were on their door, reassessing the damage, getting a hold of the uh, insurance company and we were getting the roofs bought and sold and put on. I mean, it was like clockwork. And it all happened because of segmented SMS marketing. We were extremely focused on our market and, and it took a lot of work. Now, SMS campaigns, if you're going to run one, it takes work. It, it, it takes a lot of work. For, for example, I, I could be up for two days when storms were coming through Texas, okay, and, and watching and, and knowing which zip codes to hit. And I was, I was sitting there sending out messages as the storms would come through, okay, why? Because I wanted to capture that market immediately. It's no different if you're selling hamburgers or grilled cheese. It's all the same thing. It's all the same thing. If you're selling high-end jeans or middle-range jeans or your typical 1995 Levi's, you have to know what your market is and you have to know what people buy and you have to know what is going on in your store. You have to understand the market. And as you as a sales rep, when you're talking to your clients, you have to ask those questions. Hey, who is your market? You don't want to tell them to go uh, advertise in field and stream, okay, if they're selling lingerie. And I know that's a huge stretch right there, but it's just a simple fact, okay? You want to hit the market. Now, if you own a sporting goods store, you want to advertise your, your SMS in field and stream. You want to make that happen. What variables should you consider when using SMS to discover your target market? And, and there are several variables to encounter. You know, who is your target audience and how do you advertise to them? What words do you use? How, what do you say? How do you say that? You know, if the choice isn't obvious from your product or service, there's a few ways you can narrow down your selection. So if you don't have a clear path, if you can't see clearly where you need to go, you know, and you don't have any idea what you're going to do, and, and maybe the idea is way too broad, uh, there's a few tools that can help you, all right? And when determining your SMS marketing target audience and how to advertise to them, there, there's a few factors that you must consider. First is demographics, you know, and, and many people don't use demographics. If you, how many of you have ever run Facebook ads? wake everybody up out there and ask a question. See, how many of you run Facebook ads or how many of you have ever run Facebook ads or how many of you have been to one of the trainings where I show you how to set up a Facebook ad? It's all based on demographics. Facebook has the largest range of demographics of any platform I've ever seen. They, they buy stuff from credit card companies. They know how much money you make. They know what your credit, <coughs> excuse me, they know what your credit limit is. They know how many credit cards you have. They know how much your house is. They have all that data, which allows me as a marketer go, to go out and specifically target. When you're working in, in your stores and when you're working with your, with your clients, you have to know who their market is. You have to know the demographics. And the first, and, the, and this is the, the broadest way, okay, 
to define your art, your audience's demographics. Demographics are anything you can quantitatively define, right? Age, gender, education. You know, it, it goes back to what I was just talking about. You know, you, you don't want to sell to uh, an older clientele like me if you're selling kids bikes, unless maybe a grandfather or somebody's going to come in and buy a bike for their, their grandchild, you know? So you want to target to the market that's going to come in and purchase immediately. Education level. Education level is extremely important depending on what kind of business you're in. When advertising to a target audience on demographics, align your market message with their preferences. You know what the preferences are when people come in and purchase. You know what the store is selling, okay? If they're selling high-end Nikes, okay, you want to make sure when you create your messaging that you highlight what the sales are, what's, what's being sold, you know? If I'm paying $250 for a pair of shoes and I don't, you know, I'll max at a hundred. But uh, if I'm paying $250 for a pair of tennis shoes and that's what my target market is, I need to market to people who can afford $250 tennis shoes, you know, uh, soccer graphics. Soccer graphics are another general audience segmenting tool that categorizes people based on things like their attitudes. Their, their preferences, you know, what do they like, their goals or other psychological criteria, things that make them click, okay? What, what, what is that person's makeup? And what's, what makes that person click? And, and, and what is those things that make them purchase from that one particular place? You know, when advertising these groups, consider employing the tools of, of logos, okay? Because everything's psychological, right? They, 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 they work off a of vision. They, they, everything uh, hits their psyche, if you will, and that's what creates their action, okay? And the reaction to the action of sending the text message out. You know, a nonprofit marketing to people. How many of you see the ads on TV um, with, with the dog rescue group? And they're, they're raising money and they want you to send in <clears throat> $29 a month or whatever it is. You never see a happy dog on those commercials. You never ha see a happy dog on those infomercials. They're always showing you the worst of the worst because they need help with the worst of the worst. So they, they, they work on your psyche, right? They work on your emotion. They work on making sure that, hey, you just pulled my heart right out of my chest. You know, you, 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 I know you need my money and I'm fixing to pick up the phone and I'm going to give you $49 a month. Because I can't handle seeing animals treated this way. And so they work on you psychologically through psychographics. Socioeconomic status, okay? While, while this could technically be considered a demographic, okay, advertising based on socioeconomic status has everything to do with the brand's identity. I'm going to use my children, and, and you're going to say, gosh, Gary, your kids were spoiled rotten. I use my children as an example when they were growing up. Okay. My boys played basketball. They paid, played basketball from the time they were in kindergarten all the way through high school. Okay. And football and, and, and baseball. When we went out to purchase things, okay, everything was brand identity. They had to have the best cleats, they had to have the best uh, under padding for football. They had to have the best bats. They had to have the best gloves. They had to have the best batting gloves. And as a father who, who, who loves sports, you know, I always followed their lead because my children understood brand identity was sports paraphernalia more than I did. And my kids always had the best. Now, that's not always the best thing, okay? <laughs> I'm going to tell you because it spoils your kids, but... On the flip side of that, the socioeconomic status pinned me in. You know, I wanted my children to have the best so that they could play at their highest level, creating a, an atmosphere for them that they were there to win. Okay. And uh, I coached basketball for seven years and I didn't lose. I didn't teach my kids to lose. Matter of fact, I never allowed the, the parents to come to practice. Because I didn't want some parents saying, oh, guys, we're just here to play the game. You know, we're here to win. 
We're here to win in business. So I taught my children, hey, if you want to be the best, you have to look the best, you have to do the best, and you have to excel at everything you do in order to win. And my children are, are, are exceptional winners today. They're, they're all making uh, mid six figures. So, you know, and, and they, they're good kids and they grew up okay. And the, the nice paraphernalia uh, worked out fine. But you have to decide, okay, am I going to sell, is, is my store selling mid-level products? Are they selling cheaper products? Are they selling high-end products? What is the so socioeconomic status of the people that are buying from me? All right. What is that status of them buying from me? Geography. You can successfully create marketing message for an audience based on where they live, where they work, where they dine, travel, and more. When creating messages based on audience geography, be sure to keep it local and topical. I'm not going to market the same way in Boulder, Colorado, that I'm going to market in Texas. Okay. Uh, let me give you an example of that. I do some online marketing with the products from Alibaba. Okay. And here recently I sold a product that has, that can uh, charge up to uh, eight phones a day. Uh, it's also got a flashlight in it. It's got a USB thing on it and it charges by, via the sun. Uh, you can tag it on your belt. And so it's got a compass on it. I'm holding one in my hand while I'm speaking to you. It's got a belt clip on it. Uh, it's got a, an emergency flashing light on it. And you, all you do is stick it in the sun and it stays charged. Uh, it's got an ion battery in it. And uh, it's absolutely phenomenal. And I carry this everywhere I go and I've sold a bunch of them. Okay. You want to guess where I sold them to? They targeted on uh, Instagram. Colorado, Colorado, people that hike, people that love outdoors, people that do those kind of things. And the first round I sold out of in two days. Okay. I sold 300 of them in two days. Okay. Now, why was that? Because of the geography, I was targeting a specific market with a specific product that would be used in that environment. Okay. I mean, the flashlight is a great deal because if you get up in the mountains in the Rockies and, and, and you, you got permits to camp up there, you're going to need a flashlight if the sun starts going down because it's going to get darker on the ground than it is out in the open because of the tree cover. Okay. And if you need your phone charged because there's no electricity up there, trust me, I hiked the mountains for two months. You know, it's, it's one of those things that you have to have. So geography is everything when making a decision on the market you're going to cover. Now, when I say the market, some of you are thinking, well, gosh, Carrie, wouldn't you cover? Well, you can do SMS marketing everywhere, right? I mean, if you do a national magazine and you're doing a national ad, okay, you want to make sure that whatever your products is you're selling, and if you're using SMS to get a market signed up, you have to think about geography, and they, they will separate your ads based on geography. Magazines and print material are separated based on the geography and the demographics and the socioeconomic status of specific areas. Every magazine is not printed the same. Every print material is not printed the same. So you have to think about that if you're doing broad-based, like if you have a uh, e-commerce company that you're working with or your business is e-commerce, and they sell things like hiking materials and stuff, and you want to market to those up in Colorado, up in the Rockies, and you want to run an SMS campaign up there, you have to understand geography. It's extremely, extremely important. Behavior. Behavior is one of those things where you, you just, you, you have to do it, okay? <laughs> you, you have to think of people's buying behavior. And segmenting your on, uh, audience based on behavior is like a combination of, of demographics and psychographics. You know, consumer behaviors are, are measurable trends. Everything has a trend, right? And like purchasing uh, patterns and brand loyalty and collecting this information from your subscribers is incredibly important when developing campaign. For example, if you have a client who buys the same brand of contact lenses, okay, and they buy them same contact lenses over and over each month, you can send them a promotional material for solution from that same brand. So, so let's say that you, you have a, um, uh, a, a eye place, okay, and you walk in and you say, hey, I noticed that you have three different brands of contacts here and you have three different brands of solution because each, each contact manufacturer creates their own solutions. How would you like to increase the sales of your solutions? Yeah, that would be awesome. 
then you set them up in a campaign to where the keywords are different. Hey, want to get special offers on this on this solution? Type in, you know, and I don't I don't I don't wear contacts, so I don't know what the names of the solutions are. Type in this or type in this or type in this or type in this. Now what happens is, is you segment your list. Okay, you segment your list. And now that you have your list segmented, when you want to move a particular solution that you have more of, you put it on sale and you send it out to that particular person that's buying those particular contacts because they understand that. Their behavior pattern is, this is what I buy, this is the brand I buy, and this is what I use. Okay? Any questions so far? Sending highly targeted messages to your target audience. There is nothing more important than sending highly targeted messages to your target audience. If you want to increase footfall, if you want to build your business, if you want to increase revenue, then you must send a targeted message to a targeted audience. Why do you want to do that? Because those are the people that are going to purchase. Those are the people that are going to buy from you from on that particular item. And when you send that out to them, you're going to go get it. For example, Sonic. Okay. Now, Sonic doesn't segment, but Sonic is a restaurant. Sonic sends out specials. Now, they send out specials on really three different things. Cheeseburgers, uh, uh, cheeseburgers, hot dogs, and, and uh, corny dogs. Now, why, are those th why do you think they choose those three particular things? Because that is the number one thing that Sonic buys. And you say, well, Kerry, how do you know that? Because I asked them. I know the guy that owns the Sonic here, and I said, how do they do this? And he said, the number one revenue maker for us is hot dogs and corny dogs and cheeseburgers. He said, that is our largest ticket item. And he said, when people come in and buy that, they always add drinks and they will always add uh, fries, always, or onion rings. And he said, so when they send these out, we know that. And that's the reason you always see those three particular products. They don't do cheeseburgers enough. Maybe people aren't buying as many cheeseburgers, but I, I wish I had, they, they did cheeseburgers more. So here's some tools that will help you, okay, get to where you want to go. Surveys. It's extremely easy to set up a survey on a mobile app. There are survey programs online. There's free survey programs online. You can go to, go, go, go to Google Docs, okay, and, and set up a survey, Google Forms, set one up for free. They're mobile responsive, very easy to use. And set up a survey, you can do that. And then you can go in and, and segment, you know, that, that uh, list into that survey. Uh, but surveys are a great way to take a poll of what you need to market to, all right? Uh, Two-way messaging. Two-way messaging if you have sales reps and, and they're out in the field, your sales reps have to be able to communicate what the business owner wants to their market. They have to have a communication with them to be able to do that. Now, here's something that a lot of people don't know. There is a list in the back of OK, in the back of your marketing platform, and we're going to go into this in the marketing platform in a week or so. But you can literally go in there and, and see the phone numbers. OK, now, let's say I was a car salesman. You gave me gave the car dealership permission, OK, to message me. So we have a messaging system that I can go in there and say, OK, uh, I'm going to message John today and say, hey, John, won't you come in for a ride? Or I'm going to message Carrie today and say, hey, Carrie, won't you come in for a cheeseburger? Or, I'm going to mess message Sam today because he wants this, okay? And I'm gonna go do some two-way messaging. Now, how, do you, how can you do that? You can simply do it with your phone. You can talk to them directly, okay? Uh, A-B testing. A-B testing is really cool, and it's something everybody needs to, do, <coughs> needs to do, but usually we're lazy and don't do it. You have to find out what content and your customers are gonna click on. You have to know which ad works and which does not. You have to test what you're sending out. And you set up two separate campaigns. <coughs> Excuse me. One message A would say something like, hey, thanks for joining our VIP text list. 
to keep up with our latest events, check out our Facebook page, okay? So they're gonna send them to their Facebook page. Now, if you'll notice here, they use trackable links. How many of you see trackable links in the SMS ads that you get in? You guys have to excuse me tonight, my sinuses are just draining like a sieve. But how many of you uh, use tracking links? I hope everybody does, you know? Rebrandly is a great one. Rebrandly is free. Uh, Bitly it was going away. I don't know if it's gone away or not. I don't. I know you can't sign up. New people can't sign up for Bitly. I think if you have an old account, you can still use Bitly. But if you'll notice here, they said the same thing, except they changed from Facebook page to blog, and they put their blog link in there. Okay? So same ads, sending them to different directions, and now they can go and say, well, gosh, man, Everybody clicked on Facebook and only 10 people clicked on the blog or 10 people clicked on the blog and five, you know, uh, 250 people clicked on Facebook or whatever. Okay. So make sure you a B test, make sure you go in and you understand exactly how they're doing what they're doing. And then when you pull the one that's not working and ramp up the one that is ramp up the one that is, and you need to make sure that your customers understand it. I honestly believe this. And I believe it because when I talk to people, they, they pretty much tell me. Matter of fact, we had some people on a, on a training one night. And I was glad they spoke up because it really proved the point. People are so afraid to ask a business for money that they damage the business by not doing what is right for the business and showing them how to market properly. You cheat the business by not showing them how to market properly. And A-B testing is a great way to maximize their dollars in texting, okay, getting the biggest bang for the buck, the greatest return on investment by knowing which, which ad they're actually clicking on the most and where you're sending them the most. So extremely, extremely important. And segmenting, and we, we, we covered segmenting quite a bit earlier, but Knowing what your customers want and knowing how to break it down. For example, when I was doing the, the roofing thing, you know, uh, I highly recommend if you guys know any roofers, if you, if, if you ever want to hit that market, call me and talk to me. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a tremendous market. Okay. That you can work uh, with SMS campaigns and the mobile app. Tremendous market. You can work with SMS campaigns and the mobile mobile app, but segmenting is extremely important and getting them right where you want them. Now, what kind of issues can arise from SMS to find your target market? You know, of course, there's a lot of issues that can come up with a lot of things, but as we mentioned before, setting a target audience is, is a tool to ensure your marketing campaign has a focus. Now, you heard that word, I opened with that word, and I'm gonna close training with that word. It's got to be a campaign that has a focus. It's not enough to say, hey, buy this because it's good. You just can't go out there and send out an SMS message and say, yo, come on in, you know, you may like it, you may not. You're wasting customers' money. You're wasting your clients' money. And, it, and it's not good business ethics to not understand what they need. You know, when you go out and sell a mobile app, you need to sell it based on what the client's needs are. Now, I sell mobile business cards. And I developed and designed a mobile business card <clears throat> based on a standard business card. The standard business card satisfies a client's need to disseminate the information that is wanted for that business, just like a business card. But what if that business needs a reputation management? You know, if I'm sitting there talking to them and they say, you know what, man, uh, I'm just getting pounded. I don't know what's wrong in my business, but I'm getting pounded. Well, have you ever thought about using a reputation management campaign? What is that? That allows your customers to tell you what's wrong. Okay? That allows you to your customers to tell you in a non-obtrusive way that your business employees suck. This is terrible. You need to change this. Your food is terrible. Because they don't know why people aren't coming back. And people will fill out. They will fill out a reputation management page guaranteed every time because they want to tell you why you're bad. They don't like to tell you why you're good. If you're good, you're good. And you just know you're good because of the way things are rolling. 
but they will dang sure tell you how bad you are. Okay. So you, you got to be, when you're selling a product or service, <clears throat> belief or idea, you need to provide evidence. The best way to do that is to speak directly to the interests and needs of a targeted audience. What do they want? What's going to appeal to them? What audience do I need to send out these new tennis shoes to? Creating too targeted of an audience, okay? If you get too narrow, that will kill you, all right? Too, too narrow will absolutely kill you. It's, it's a detriment to your SMS campaign. It actually will destroy your SMS campaign. And, and I've got a couple of examples here. <coughs> a good target audience. Middle-aged mothers with an annual household income of eighty thousand to one hundred twenty thousand dollars. That's a great target audience because your your the demographics are there. You know you know exactly who you're going after. Uh, you're you're selling a specific item that reaches this target. But here's a bad target audience because it's way too narrow and it and it removes almost everybody in your list. A sentimental non-working mother in the Midwest with family money on their first marriage and an annual household income of $150,000. Now, believe it or not, if you use demographic tools, you can literally narrow it down to that. And I highly recommend, do this on Facebook. Everybody go do this experiment. I want you to go on Facebook like you're building an ad. You don't have to send out an ad. Just go in like you're building an ad. And I want you to continually narrow down the demographic information on an, on an area. And I want you to watch the numbers. Every time you click one, you'll go from like 100,000 people to target down to 50,000, down to 10,000, down to 20,000, down to 5,000, down to less than 100. And you'll just sit there and watch it. Okay, that is that is bad messaging. Okay, that is, that's, that's just not the way to go. So keep it where it's, it's, it's a general demographic that reaches the audience that you want to reach, okay? Oops, man, how did that happen? Give me one second here, I'll bring that screen back up. I sat right there and fell right out of that screen. Any questions at all? Any questions at all? Let's see here. That should bring that back up. Yeah, there it is. And let me bring up the chat. Anybody have any questions? Yes, everything I'm talking about, you can do with the app and with the with the SMS platform. Every single thing I'm talking about. The same SMS platform I use to take my company from 100000 to $1.9 million is the same SMS platform that we use today. Exact same app exact same platform. SMS marketing changed my, changed my life. It changed my life financially. It changed my life uh, on a, from a business standpoint. I'm here today training you because of SMS marketing. That's the, that's the reason I'm here today. That's the reason I joined App Wizard Studio. That's the reason I became a trainer here. It was from that one campaign, that one year that changed my business forever. And then we sold the company. We drove it up to where... It, we could sell it for a 3X and we sold it and got out. And, and this is the amazing thing. Let me close with this story. We sold the company, gave them the apps, gave them everything we were using. Okay. That was part of the deal. Hey, we want to do exactly what you were doing, Carrie. I mean, if you took it to $2 million, we can take it to $6 million. One year later, Okay, and it was one of the, that next year was one of the biggest. I, I wish I'd have stayed now because we drove it up to six million. But one year later, the company was shutting its doors. And I stopped by and I said, "Hey, man!" I said, "I noticed you guys are moving materials out of here. What's going on?" He said, "Ah, we're going out of business." Now this 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 guy wrote us a three million dollar check. Okay, a three million dollar check for our roofing company. He said, yeah, we're going out of business. I said, why? He said, well, we're going to move to a different area. I said, we just can't get nothing going here. I said, I said, well, what changed? And this was the most amazing words I've ever heard from a business owner. He said, I just cannot get my people to go out and inspect these homes like you did and get them, get them to sign up on this SMS list. Who was running the ship? Who, who was in charge? You know, who was in charge of that company? Not the owner. 
I can guarantee you they wouldn't have worked for me for 15 seconds if they told me they weren't going to do something, you know? So run your business, make money. Let somebody else run your business and <laughs> close the doors, I guess. That's the motto of that story. But uh, I want to thank everybody for coming out. We're going to continue next week. Uh, hey, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is some training that needed to be done. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And, uh, you know, try to give great content to help direct you. Text messaging, message marketing is one of the biggest recurring income products that you have in your platform. I don't know if you realize that or not, but text message marketing is one of the largest recurring revenue income uh, platforms inside the inside inside your platform. And why more people aren't doing it is beyond me. Can you sell SMS by? Absolutely, you can. I sell SMS by itself all the time. Absolutely, you can. You can actually give them access to the SMS platform and that and that platform only. And I recommend you doing that so they can do their own SMS marketing. No, tell it to everybody. I mean, that's you know, everybody needs text message marketing. Every business needs text message marketing. I believe every business needs three things. Uh, and two of those things are a mobile app and text message marketing. Okay. Those, those two things are, are the center of, of my marketing. The app is, is the center and, and everything else flips around that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. God bless. And it's 840. So we, we, we didn't quite, uh, get under that 835 mark but i think we got everything out we needed to do and and uh, i hope to see everyone next week uh, next week matter of fact the the guy from uh from uh, uh golly the digital table chance just texted me that we're going to get together and we're going to get this thing rolling for you guys so everybody have a wonderful evening have a good night and we will talk to you uh next wednesday